بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تبوتنا إلا وأنتم مسلمون All praise is due to Allah whom we turn to for help, forgiveness and guidance to the right path. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our sins. For whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever is misguided, then only Allah the Almighty can guide him. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah the Almighty alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger, the last of the prophets sent to mankind. May the prayers and peace be upon him until the day of judgment. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and die only as Muslims, and die only as Muslims. My dear brothers, it has been authentically narrated that Uthman radiallahu an, when the grave used to be mentioned to him, or when he stood above a grave, he used to weep until his beard became wet. It would be said to him, you mention hell and paradise and you do not react and behave like you do when the grave is mentioned or when you stand over the grave. He said, yes, it's true. Because I've heard the Prophet wasallam saying that the grave is the first stage of the stages of the hereafter. He who succeeds and passes the trial and the test of the grave, then what comes after it will be easier. And he who fails and is not saved from the grave and the punishments and torments of the grave, then what comes after it is more severe. And I heard he radiallahu anhu said, and I heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying that I have seen that whatever scene, horrible scene that I have seen, I have not seen a more horrible scene than the grave, than the grave and its torments and punishments. My dear brothers, it has also been authentically narrated that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he stood over a grave, that he wept and cried until his tears, until his tears made the ground wet. And he looked at his companions and he said to them, my dear brothers, for this day, Prepare yourselves. Ay ikhwani, a'iddu li hadha al-yawm. Aw li hadha al-yawm, a'iddu. For this day, prepare yourselves. The grave and its torments and punishments. We have been informed that the grave, my dear brothers, is either a garden of the gardens of paradise and or 
a pit of the pit of the pits of hellfire. In more than one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ informs that a believer, that a person in general, will be tested and trialed in his grave. And the believer, when he passes that test and trial, his grave will be furnished from paradise. And he will be clothed from paradise. And the door to paradise will be open to him. And he will smell the fragrance of paradise. And his grave will be made spacious for him as much as the eyesight can see, as far as the eyesight can see. Contrary and opposite to that, what happens to a disbeliever and all some of the sinners from amongst this nation. We have been informed that the one who fails the test and trial of the grave, he will be furnished, his grave will be furnished from hellfire when he has it. And he will be clothed from hellfire. And the door to hellfire will be opened to his grave. And he will smell some of the heat, some of its heat will enter his grave. And the bad smell will enter his grave. And his grave will be compressed to such an extent that his ribs will come together. When any other minute. And then he will be hit with a sledgehammer, my dear brothers, with a sledgehammer by an angel. That sledgehammer, if it were to hit a mountain, it would turn it into dust. What are the other men? Who can take the punishment and torments of the grave, my dear brothers? And that is why the Prophet وسلم, on a regular basis, he himself used to seek refuge in Allah, the Almighty from the punishments and torments of the grave. And he used to emphasize and encourage his companions to do the same. In the ummah tubtala fi kuburiha. This ummah will be tested and trialed in its graves. And he used to say, Ta'awwadhu billah min adhab al-kabr. Ta'awwadhu billah min adhab al-kabr. And often repeat that twice and three times. This ummah will be tested and trialed in its grave. Seek refuge, refuge in Allah from the punishments and torments of the grave. Lately, we've been speaking about the Quran in our previous khutbas. And how it is the one of the best things and one of the most powerful things that protect you. And we've been shedding light on certain verses, certain chapters of the Quran that come to your aid and help and safeguard and protect you from all harms and evils. Without a doubt, in the grave, as we have been also informed by our, by our dear Prophet Wasallam. Without a doubt, your belief and your devotion and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your good deeds protect you from the torments and punishments of the grave as we have been informed, as has authentically been narrated from the Prophet wasallam. That's the prayer, the fasting, the obligatory charity, the voluntary charity, the good actions and deeds towards your kith and kin, your relatives, doing good to others and helping out others, saves and safeguards and protects and shields you from the punishments of the grave. But without a doubt, as I said, 
one of the best things that shield and protect and save you from the punishment of the grave is this glorious book, the Quran. And we've been shedding light, as I said, on some verses and some chapters of this glorious and holy book. And today, one of the most important and powerful chapters, surahs of the Quran that protect you from the punishments of the grave is Surah Tabarak. Surah Tabarak or Surah Al-Mulk. Surah Tabarak, the blessed one, the praised one, the exalted one. Characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And or Surah Al-Mulk, the owner of all this dominion, the owner of the whole universe, which is again referring to Allah's greatness and Allah's oneness in His Lordship. This surah, my dear brothers, the Prophet Sallallahu says in the authentic hadith, Surah Al-Mulk, هِيَ الْمَانِعَةُ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ The surah, or Surah Tabarak, is the preventer of a person receiving torment and punishment in his grave. It prevents its reader, the one who lives with the Surah, who reads it in plenty form, who's a companion of the Surah, as in another narration, as the Prophet Sallallahu mentions in another narration, which we are going to mention uh, pretty soon. It's a preventer, it's a savior, it's a safeguard and protection for you from the punishments and torments of the grave. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, Surah min al Quran, ma hiya illa thalathuna ayah. Ma hiya illa thalathuna ayah. Khasanat an sahibah, an sahibiha. A chapter from the Quran, which is only 30 verses, as, in, as is the case in Surah Tabar, which is only 30 verses. It defended, it came to the aid and help of its companion until it entered him paradise. And I want to highlight that word in the hadith, companion. It came to the aid and help of its companion. Meaning the person who regularly reads it. Regularly reads it, of course, and understands it and implements it in his life. That's a true companion of the Quran or of this surah. One who regularly reads it. It will only take probably not even five minutes of your time. It's approximately a page and a half to two pages. 30 verses. This beautiful chapter, the Prophet ﷺ says in another narration, that it interceded. شَفَعَتْ لِرَجُلٍ حَتَّى أَخْرَجَتْهُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَأَدْخَلَتْهُ الْجَنَّةِ It interceded for a person until it took him from hellfire and entered him paradise. In another narration, شَفَعَتْ لِرَجُلٍ حَتَّى غُفِرَ لَهُ It interceded for a person until he was forgiven. Until he was forgiven. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ لِكُلِّ ذَنْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. In the name of Allah, and all praises due to Allah, and may the peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers, one of you may wonder what is so special about this surah, about this chapter. What is so special about it? What does it entail? What are the themes that it tackles? Well, firstly, know that the surah was named as Al-Munjiyah. 
the Savior. And it was named as Al Mani'ah, the Preventer. Al Munjia, Wal Mani'ah. And it safeguards and prevents uh, and protects and shields a person from any harm and evil that will come his way. Whether in this world and or in the grave and or on the day of judgment. That's what's so special about this surah. It is also called al-waqiyah. Al-waqiyah, the one, the one that shields and protects someone. These are three famous names for this surah. This surah, my dear brothers, entails some important information and tackles some very important themes. First and foremost, it informs us of Allah's might and power and wisdom and that He is the one that gives life and death. Life and death are in His hands, the Almighty. And it also informs us the purpose of us being created in this world. It informs us of what our main purpose in this life is. Secondly, it is a proof and sign of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His Lordship that He, the Almighty, is the creator, planner, runner, provider, owner of this universe and that He alone deserves to be worshipped, none others besides Him. None others besides Him. It is a warning for the sinner and the disbeliever. It is a warning. It gives a huge warning to the sinner and the disbeliever that if he doesn't stop what he is doing, then Allah's punishment may befall him. Like it befell the previous nations before us. In this world, before the next. It also entails the belief in the resurrection and the day of judgment. It entails the belief in life after death. And that the abode of those who reject this belief will be the hellfire one the other. will be the hellfire. So there's a connection between this surah and the grave and what the grave entails. And that there is a life after death and that we will be judged by Allah the Almighty. So I advise you, my dear brothers, to read this surah and make it a part of your life as much as you can and take heed of the huge lessons to be learned from it and to implement it in your daily lives Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-khayr kullahu ajilahu wa ajilahu ma alimna minhu wa ma lam na'lam wa na'udhu bika min al-sharr kullihi ajilihi wa ajilihi ma alimna minhu wa ma lam na'lam Allahumma inna نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر اللهم نجنا من عذاب القبر يا رب العالمين أو الله save us from the punishments and torments of the grave أو الله make the grave for us spacious make it a garden the gardens of paradise open up doors for us to paradise clothe us from paradise يا رب العالمين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأخذ دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأعطي الصلاة